Okay, there's some tunes that I only know the first couple parts, and I was about to break into this one, but the problem is I don't know the third and fourth part yet. IG tape is shifting a little bit. That's the part where I blank uh, blank on the music. Keep in mind though, just like Denise Lee, I can't do s I sight reading is not very <laughs> so, you know, sheet music is not our first choice. <laughs> you know, there's no such thing as sheet music for braille sheet music, at least, for bagpiping. I don't know if Denise Lee used braille sheet music when she was learning opera, but she may have memorized everything by ear, which is what pipers should do, even if you're sighted. Like, for example, um, okay, so, let's see, the first time I heard O Mio Babino Caro was Laura Breton, uh, at 13 years old, I can't remember when I heard it, sometime in September of 2016, like, I was just, like, I fainted, just like I did when I heard early Denise Lee's first, like, 2003 era voice. First that was the first time I heard O Mio Babino Caro. I wasn't too familiar with it because, you know, I haven't been listening to too much opera before I heard Laura Breton, which is how I fell in love with opera because, you know, I love the fast vibrato that Laura Breton had and I thought, okay, well, I don't like opera singers with slow vibratos and that almost everyone has that and it's just like, once I heard a faster vibrato, you know, I, I loved it and so I, I eventually found 30 to 40 opera singers with amazingly fast vibratos, which is really cool. Um, and about, that gave me about 20 different versions of O Mio Babino Caro, and, um, I think the, f for the, let's see, the seventh version I found, I start, I, I had that, had that piece memorized. Problem is, though, you can't play it on the pipes, but it, go, it just goes to show that, you know, you're, if you're a piper, but you don't sing opera, you know, you, you still, by all means, can memorize non-piping stuff. I mean, <laughs> I don't know any other pipers that have a full piece, whether that be classical or modern or whatever, fully memorized. Like, I mean, like, maybe there, there could be a couple piper friends of mine that have an Alessia Cara song fully memorized. I don't know. You know? Um... I don't know, maybe a pop star like Le Shikara or, you know, BB Rex or something, maybe she could have a jig like this memorized, I don't know.
Yeah, I, I, I can make, I can do a vibrato on low A. Yeah, that's how Spanish gaita pipers do that. So you barely go on the edge of the hole and wiggle your finger. If you're on the full, if you're co totally covering the hole, it's going to be a trill. Yeah. So you just got to, you know, make sure you're not even close to being on the hole. <laughs> really well. I got that from Amadeus. <laughs> and he's like, well, that went off remarkably well, don't you think? <laughs> Even though, I should warn you, some of the sopranos in Amadeus have wobble vibratos. Serious wobble vibratos. Especially the soprano who does the Queen of the Night. You know, the, the piece... In fact, almost every single version of that piece the soprano always has a wobble vibrato. I've never heard a soprano with a correct vibrato singing that piece. It's the one, you know... It's that one. It's... Barely anybody has a good vibrato whenever they do that piece. I... I'm surprised Denise Lee didn't try that piece when she was in her greatest prime time as an opera singer. I wonder if Joyce Di Donato tried it. It may have been too high for Joyce Di Donato. Cecilia Bartoli? I'm not sure. I think, you know, both of these are mezzo-sopranos, and I think this piece is more for a first soprano. I do know that Brianna Domro did that, but Brianna Domro has the worst vibrato I've ever heard. And, yep, it's a wobble. You know, it's really slow. Like, it sounds like an ambulance is that bad. You should have taken up the, the doodle sack, Brianna. Because I think she's German, and they have German bagpipes. Obviously, it's a good thing I, I, can't, I can't really name the worst Sopranos that I've heard. Because, you know, I wouldn't want to know their names. I mean, Brianna Dumbra is the only one whose name I know, who, whose name I know of who... I think has a wobble vibrato. And if you guys think, oh, he's he's totally liar, 
well, I you can say what you want, but listen to listen to Denise Lee from 2003, and you'll agree with me that Brianna Domro is a worse vibrato. Um, Maria Callas, her she also had a wobble vibrato. Um, and yet too many people liked it. Julie Andrews, that's a big example. Too many people like Julie Andrews, and yet she has a wobble vibrato. I really don't get it. Everyone says, oh my gosh, I love Julie Andrews, I love Julie Andrews. She's got a wobble vibrato, though. And I'm pretty sure from people like, from so many people liking Julie Andrews, here we are with so many people having wobble vibratos. Because Julie Andrews had a wobble vibrato herself. If everyone loved Denise Lee, I'm pretty sure that vibrato would be in a different movement today. Like, it would sound a lot better. Like, right now you hear too many vibratos that have wobbles, too many people that don't know how to trill. Oh, it's just disconcerting. It does not impress me. I may not be an opera singer, but it does not impress me to hear soprano after soprano after soprano who uses who has wobble vibratos. It's very disconcerting. I have yet to hear, like I said, I have yet to hear a soprano with a properly fast vibrato according to some voice scientists I looked on their website that a slow vibrato is bad for the voice, but I have yet to hear a couple sopranos with, I have yet to hear a soprano with a properly fast vibrato doing that Queen of the Night aria. I'm pretty sure that Obviously, I don't even have a date now, but I'm pretty sure a couple decades later, having kids, I'm going to teach all the girls how to get the correct kind of vibrato. You know, I, n I may not be an opera singer, but I know how to. How n I know how they do it. I know how the best sing opera singers did it. And they're like, you know, this is their only way to do it, you know, and having them listen to Denise Lee all the time, early Denise Lee all the time. Later Denise Lee, like, modern De Denise Lee right now is, like, out of the question. 2018 Denise Lee, however, is, like, still amazing. Um, but, yeah, like, having them listen to D Denise Lee and, you know, it's like, here's the opera singers, here's the kind of vibrato you need to avoid. Which would include almost every single version of Queen of the Night that I've s heard thus far. And I really don't understand it. Like, everyone seems to take that kind of vibrato for granted. It's just like, ah. It's really, really slow vibrato, and it just, ah, annoys the Debbies out of me, as I used to say. That, the, it's exactly the same thing. A lot of pipers don't care about how out of tune their practice chanter is. Like, listen to my practice chanter. It sounds almost like the bagpipe scale. Mm. Almost everybody has their practice chanter nowhere even close to that. Because they're, think they're thinking, oh, it's just a practice chanter. It's not a musical instrument. Uh, heck, it is a musical instrument. I think it could be because people think, oh, opera's died out. We don't care how bad your opera voice is, you know? We don't care if it sounds like an angel or we don't care if it sounds like a fire truck siren. But it's just like, oh. Ugh, oh, I'm tired of this slow vibrato. Tired of it, tired of it, tired of it. And it happened with a lot of people who once had amazing vibratos. It happened with Denise Lee, it happened with Sarah Brightman. You know, these people who once had amazing vibratos have slow vibratos now. It's just like, ah. Oh. My goodness gracious. Oh, and at the same time, I still have yet to hear a soprano singing over an Italian Zamponia bagpipe. <laughs> I don't know, you know, you, you, got, you, you got like a nice say palmi, a number six Zamponia. It's like, you know, hey, Cecilia, what one do you want to do? She'd go, oh, mio bambino caro. It's like, I can do that. 
So I had strike up. You got this nice bass I'm pulling you with a movable tenor. So you know bass channer, movable tenor, and soprano channer. So you basically have three channers. Alright, here we go. And so I start playing it. All of a sudden I hear this absolutely amazing Denise Lee like early Denise Lee like voice doing the melody over this really amazing sounding Zamponia bagpipe. That would be the best. And I actually thought of a Zamponia arrangement for Omeo Babino Kato. However, because I do not have a Zamponia, I can't even demonstrate it. And even worse, I don't have a piano in the room or a keyboard, so I can't even play it. <laughs> I don't have three voices. <laughs> Just like Amadeus, like, why don't I have three heads? I don't have three voices. I can't do a Zamponia arrangement with my voice. I mean, because the essence of Zamponia music is three voices, two or three voices. You know, that's what defines the Zamponia as an instrument. It's exactly what defines the Zamponia as an instrument. <laughs>